Welcome to StoryMaker. StoryMaker is an app to help you learn how to produce better stories. We do that in a few ways. In this video, I'll take you through the process. When we first open StoryMaker, we're presented with two sliding trays explaining the ideas behind StoryMaker. These will go away once we start making stories and taking lessons. In the top corner, we can access a tray to move around to different parts of the app. The titles are self-explanatory, but a very nice feature to point out is Quick Capture. These buttons at the top allow you to immediately jump into creating a new story if you're in a rush. Now that we have an idea of how to get around, let's get started with a story. First, we have to give our video a title. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to call it Graffiti Artist. That will make sense soon, I promise. Below is where we choose the medium we're going to use to tell our story. StoryMaker supports using any medium, video, photo, audio, or audio slideshow. For this demo, let's select video. Before we get started, we need to decide how complex we want our story to be. The default is simple story. It's a great place to start for anyone who's new to this. A simple story is made up of five clips, each covering a single aspect of the story. In our experience, shooting five distinct clips is the easiest way to get someone to tell a story. The simple story template is the one we would get as well if we had used the quick capture buttons. Choosing scene template will give us one more screen before we begin. For the sake of this demo, let's choose scene template. Our options for templates are event, breaking news, issue, and profile. Each of these templates are designed to guide you through the complete story making process. We've made them generic enough that they will be able to be used for lots of stories, but specific enough to give you focus. At the bottom, we can choose basic or expert. The difference between the two is in the number of scenes that will make up our story. More scenes make it more complex. By choosing, we're deciding how complex we want our story to be. Let's choose basic. When we click the arrow in the top right, we are taken to the story screen. The story screen works like a table of contents for our story. Up top, we have our title and template name, and we see a list of three scenes which make up our story. We can start with any scene we like, returning here and moving into different scenes as needed. When we select a scene, we're given specific instructions for creating the first clip in it. When we swipe through, we see other clips in the scene and unique instructions for each of them. If we already have clips on our device, we can add clips to our story from the gallery. If we're ready to shoot, we can tap on the big icon and we're given a camera view with an overlay of a compositional example. You can swipe through these to see different options. These are here to help you learn how to frame your shots effectively for the specific goal of the clip. Each clip has its own set of compositional overlays. So for establishing shots, you'll see wider examples. Here are the long shots, medium shots, close-ups, and details. We really love this feature. It's the clearest example of our goal to help people at the point of production. To show you how StoryMaker can help you edit, let's jump ahead to a completed scene. All of our clips are now added to this scene. You can see all our icons have been replaced by thumbnails of the video clips. To edit our video, we move on to the Order tab. At the top, in the action bar, there's a scissor icon. This allows us to trim the in point and out point of a clip. In the middle, we have a preview window with icons below for each of the clips in the scene. The clips are ordered in their location in the video. So the first clip is on the left and the second clip is next to that and so on and so on. When we click play, StoryMaker plays a preview of our video using all of the clip's contents. If we don't like part of a clip, we can select the scissors and using the timeline markers, we can just drag the in point and out points to where we like. We see our changes as we make them so we can get exactly what we want out of our clips. When we're happy with it, we click trim clip in the top right and it's saved. Changing the order of clips is a breeze. Maybe we think this shot will go better at the end. We can just drag and drop it in the clip order and it's good to go. If we're interested in adding a voiceover to our story, we can do so on this screen. All we do is select record voiceover at the bottom of the screen and start speaking. Be sure to use headphones or turn the volume down first though. Otherwise, you'll get an echo in your video. StoryMaker will play our video and start recording an audio track right there, allowing us to narrate as our video plays. When we're done speaking, we just select done and we can watch it right away with our audio already added. When we've finished our scene, we select finish and StoryMaker returns to our story page. We would then go through the same process for each of the scenes in our story. But for this demo, let's skip ahead. I'll add clips from a story I shot in Cairo last year on an interesting graffiti artist. His name is Ganzir and his work is beautiful. I told you that would make sense. With all our clips added and our edits made, we can watch our finished story on the review screen. 
This is here to give us a reminder to watch our story as a whole before we publish it. Trust me, it's always a good idea to give any story one final review before it's published. The publish screen is where we finalize all the details for our stories. We can edit our title, write a description, and if you set up a StoryMaker account, you can choose the section and add a location to help sort it on the StoryMaker site. If you don't, no worries, these options won't affect anything else on other sites. Now, at the bottom, I have two options, export and publish. Export will add in automatic audio crossfades and render our story into a single video file and store it on our mobile device. When it's done, we can choose what apps on our phone we might want to share it with, or we can watch it right there. We think it does a pretty nice job with the export, but if you need to, you can edit the compression options in the settings menu. If you click publish, it will go through the same export process, but it will then immediately publish the story to the YouTube account set up on the phone and share it to the StoryMaker site. When we go back to the home screen, you can see our story is there waiting in case we want to go in to make changes or publish it somewhere else. Now that we know how to make stories, let's talk about lessons. StoryMaker has a complete mobile multimedia production textbook available. All we do is slide the tray out, select lessons, and I'm taken to a list of five sections. We've included a glossary as well. It contains key terms from the lessons we thought some people may not be familiar with. As a group, these lessons are designed to give users a 101 level course in each of their respective subjects. The lessons contain a combination of text and multimedia to walk you through different concepts. At the end of each lesson, we've included a quiz so you can test yourself on the concepts from the lesson. You can track your progress through the lessons on the home screen as well. You can see now, I finished one story and one lesson. There it is, that's StoryMaker. We can't wait to see the stories you make. If you have any feedback, please get in touch.